Welcome to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping Orange County. With your host, Don Camber. Hello, live from the OC Talk Radio studios at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation Center. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber with another great guest impacting our community in a positive way. Today, I welcome Junior League of Orange County immediate past president, Sabrina Begg. The nonprofit organization has been training women for 65 years at tackling issues in Orange County. Thank you, Sabrina, for being on Impact OC. Thank you so much, Don, for having me on behalf of the Junior League. We are so excited to be here. Sabrina, please explain the role the league plays in promoting volunteerism and leadership skills to improve the community. Well, Don, as you mentioned, we've been around for 65 years, and as part of our mission, uh, we are an all-women's organization. We are committed to promoting volunteerism, developing the potential of women, and improving our community right here in Orange County through the effective leadership of our trained members. So the way we do that, um, and really the ultimate goal, is for women to join the Junior League of Orange County, California, Uh, receive the wonderful training and resources that our organization provides, as well as the hands-on opportunities that we provide, Um, and for women to really establish and work on some of our core competencies that will then enable them to become better leaders in their community, whether that entails serving on a board of directors for a different local nonprofit Um, being involved in a child sports team, the local PTO, whatever the leadership opportunity may be, we really love um, giving those tools uh, to our women so that they can make a positive change in the community. Do you know how it started? That is a really good question. Uh, Kind of, I do. So Junior League of Orange County is part of the Association of Junior Leagues International, which is over 100 years old, and um, we are in over 273 or 274 leagues throughout three different countries. The way we got started here was a group of women in the Newport League, in the Newport area, created what was called the Newport Harbor Service League. And now you're really having me dig back deep in my memory and thoughts here, but a small group of women created this group and they then applied for their charter through AJLI, the kind of parent organization. And that is how we became the Junior League of Orange County. So give me the demographics of the members. Yeah. So we have um, about 400 members at the moment, and we have three different types of membership within the league. We have new members, which are just that, members that are brand new and that are going through kind of the uh, introductory membership period. We then have our active members who have completed the onboarding that the new members go through. And then we also have our sustaining members. Um, Sustaining members have served the league for a minimum of seven years, and then they um, become sustaining, and they are, they like to refer to themselves as the group that has the most fun, which I don't disagree with, but their requirements in terms of the hours that they put in are a little bit more relaxed. So perhaps that opens up more time for them to have the fun. Um, Our women range in age from 21. Um, I think our oldest member is in her 90s. We have some members that have been members of the league for over 55 years, um, which is really neat. And, you know, we have members spread across all over Orange County. We have members in the Newport area, Tustin, Huntington Beach, Costa Mesa, Irvine, um, just sprinkled all around the county. And we also have a few members that don't live in Orange County, but that choose to be a part of our league. So how does it operate? Do they meet and then learn leadership skills at a certain place? Yeah. So, you know, now that we are kind of in this COVID era, meetings are a little different than what they used to look like. Um, We are doing a lot, if not everything, virtually um, just to make sure everyone is safe and, you know, um, at ease in terms of everything that's going on right now. But typically, we have you, as a member of the Junior League, you're a part of a committee. Uh, You get to select the committee that you're on um, based on what your interests are and how they align with the leagues. And then that committee meets at least once a month. Um, You know, pre-COVID, these were in-person meetings. We have a headquarters building. 
And a lot of the meetings would take place there. You can, we also would have meetings at restaurants, members' homes, community centers. Now, for the most part, the meetings are done virtually over, uh, for example, Zoom. We also offer a lot of trainings. And so a lot. It, it's interesting. You don't just get trained as a member of the Junior League from attending a training. I believe that a lot of the training actually comes from being a member and serving on the committee. We have different committees that are tasked with different types of things. And as a member of these committees, you are working in a team. You're developing your leadership skills. Each team or committee is led by a leader, a a committee chair, um, or a vice president of a particular council or a kind of wing or branch of our organizational chart. And it's really through working together with a team of other women that I think you develop the most um, leadership skills, your potential, and where you can really hone in and fine-tune your skills. And, of course, we offer traditional trainings as well. We have a calendar that all members log on to that you can find, um, you know, the latest and the greatest upcoming events, uh, you know, fun trainings, uh, kind of more substantive trainings. There's really something for everyone to sign up for. What kinds of committees? Uh, So some of our committees include public affairs and advocacy. We have a a committee, actually, um, that does impact OC work, so community types of events and planning. Um, We have fund development committees. Uh, These committees are responsible for the fundraising efforts of the league, which, as I'm sure most nonprofits have told you, is an instrumental uh, role within any nonprofit organization. Uh, We also have a board of directors, which is a group of women that meet, as well as an executive management team. So it's a very sophisticated organizational chart. And then you determine what kinds of causes you care to work for. Yeah, yeah. And actually, right now, we are at a kind of a really interesting place in our organization. We are in year two of our five-year strategic plan. Um, And we are currently in the process of reevaluating our current focus areas. So our current focus areas are foster youth and human trafficking. And every few years, what we like to do is, you know, kind of measure our success, evaluate our um, impact, and try and determine if we, you know, need to make some changes and some shifts, or if we want to take on new focus areas in the community based on what the community needs. So that's what we're currently in, an endeavor that we are currently um, engaging in. Um, We have a special ad hoc that the board of directors has set up that is working to evaluate the current efficacy um, of the focus areas and see how we want to move forward. So basically, members, through their involvement with the Junior League, gain the leadership skills so that they can move on to other organizations or businesses so that they can make an impact in the community. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's not just moving on to other organizations. Of course, like I said, we've got, we have members that have been with us for decades, and, and we want to keep every single member for decades. Um, I wish we could offer a lifetime. Well, there is something like a, a lifetime membership that we have. Um, I believe it's called an emeritus member. Um, but I don't even know about that, because too many details about that, because you've got to be in the league for a very, very long time until you kind of hit that status. But So, of course, we want to keep all of our members for as long as possible, But like you said, you know, if our members do venture out into other organizations, which many do, and they bring the skill set and the leadership and the development and the training that they've received within the Junior League of Orange County, that only enhances other community organizations and the community as a whole. And it's not just community organizations. My day job, I'm an attorney, and you wouldn't believe how much the skills and the training that I've acquired through the Junior League helps me day to day in my job um, as an attorney. And I know that that's the true, that's, that rings true for a lot of women in our league in the various professions um, that they are in. And it also helps you in kind of your, you know, social life, your personal um, matters as well. Things such as, you know, how to deal with conflict, how to manage personalities, how to properly and effectively communicate not just in writing, but also orally. I think those are skills that don't just benefit us when we are working with other nonprofits, but they really help us every single day in our lives, whether it be in the home or out in the workforce. Well, how did the organization help human trafficking? So a great question. Um, We adopted human trafficking as one of our focus areas several years ago. I want to say five to seven years ago. And at the time, we were... um, 
you know, one of the organizations that were at the forefront of really bringing light to this issue in Orange County. Now, it, you know, there's a huge spotlight on, on human trafficking here in Orange County. It's very much talked about, but it really wasn't when we adopted this as one of our focus areas. Um, we are now uh, partners with the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force. We've put on various roundtable events with people from the DA's office, local agencies, um, Orangewood, the Lighthouse Foundation, to really generate a lot of advocacy and awareness of this issue, which at the time when we um, adopted it as our focus area, was an em- it was an existing issue in Orange County, but it was very much emerging in terms of falling onto people's radar. Um, a lot of people, when we would talk about human trafficking, you know, they would say to us, well, that doesn't happen here in Orange County. And, and we would share with them the, stati- the statistics and people would be shocked. You know, I didn't think that that was here in Orange County. I didn't think that was right here in, you know, in my neighboring city or even in my city. And so we've done a tremendous amount of work raising awareness and with advocacy um, and supporting legislature that um, helps to combat human trafficking. Leadership training. What kind of training is offered? Uh, So there is a ton of training that's offered throughout the year. And um, different types of things that we train on, for, for example, are um, strategic thinking, leadership and service ethics, commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is a huge uh, charge of the Junior League of Orange County. Last year, we had a, um, an ad hoc group that was focused on establishing a diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility plan for our league so that our members can do this work not only for the league but take it out to their employment to their communities um, to other organizations Um, we also have trainings on critical thinking decision making team building relationship building and like i said written and oral communications what are the requirements to be a member um requirements to be a member that is a good question. And the answer is a simple one. There aren't a ton of requirements. We do have annual dues, just like many other organizations. And as a new member, you go through kind of an onboarding process, a new member program, where you receive specific trainings that are focused for new members, where you get to learn more about the organization, the history of the organization, our fund development efforts, our community impact, our community focus areas, our community partners and projects. And once you've completed the new member program, you are then considered an active member of the Junior League. So it's really easy to join. Um, You know, there's no referral or letter of recommendation, nothing like that that's required. And in fact, we have a new member information session coming up for anyone that might be interested in joining. It is going to be virtual, so it's going to be Zoom, super easy to log on. And it's going to be on December 8th at 6.30 p.m., And if anyone is interested, they can uh, register on our website, which is www.jlocc.org. And why don't you give us that again, please? Absolutely. www.jlocc.org. So how do people generally join? Do they start in their early 20s and then just remain if that's what they want to do? Yeah. You know, no age is... um, too old to start. Um, We have a lot of women that are in their 20s and their 30s and their 40s, like I said, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, If you are a 35-year-old, it is not too late to join. If you are 45, it is not too late to join. Um, If you're in your 50s or your 60s or your 70s and you're interested in joining, it's not too late to join. We truly embrace women of, you know, from all different walks of life and And that includes, you know, because we are so charged and driven with diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, all ages. So what have you found in terms of members where they've moved on to? So we have a lot of members that um, I wouldn't say have moved on per se, but that also are involved with other organizations. We have a lot of members that um, work very closely with the Blind Children's Learning Center, with the Rays Foundation, with the Chalk Glass Slipper Guild. So the so thing many. is, they get, they're part of your organization, but then they take their skills and then they can help other organizations. Absolutely. And Friends of CASA is another one. 
we have a lot of members that are actively involved in so many of these other organizations. So many times these people will say that the Junior League is part of their bio. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And, you know, I have it not only on my bio, but also my resume. And you wouldn't believe how many times um, that has led or opened up doors and, you know, kind of opened up conversations and led to some really interesting conversations with prospective employers or other boards that I've wanted to apply and serve on. Our goal really is, at least for myself, what I love doing and hearing about is when you go to another organization, um, no matter how big or small, and you're helping, you know, in whatever way you might be helping, whether it be a, a small contribution based on your time or a very large one, and they say, wow, you know, that's great. Thank you so much. I love being able to credit back to the Junior League of Orange County. And so many of us do that. We say, oh, you know, I'm kind of known for you've always got an agenda, like a a written agenda. And you never attend a meeting without an agenda. And your agendas are, you know, so well laid out. And I'm like, I learned it at the Junior League. You know, even at work, if I'm having a, a, a big meeting, I will make an agenda. And that's a skill that I picked up at the Junior League. Um, So it's nice to be able to share with others, whether it be at your work, in your social circles, or in other organizations that, oh, I learned that at the Junior League. What's the time commitment? Well, that is something very um, neat about the league. Um, This year, we have started a kind of a new uh, time commitment slash requirements uh, model where you tell us what time you have to give to the league in what's called a member compact. So if you are super busy juggling work, life, home, family, like, you know, almost all women out there nowadays, and if you've got just five months, five hours a month to give us, or maybe it's just five hours a year, or it's 50 hours a year, you tell us what works for you and your schedule, and that is how we shape your junior league experience. And part of your junior league experience is doing various duties. Share with us what they are. Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, one of the responsibilities is serving on a committee. Every member is placed on a committee. And this is a great way to, you know, make friends, meet new people, um, be involved on a a project, a a team. Um, So that's requirement number one. Um, You know, we don't make you attend trainings. We don't really make you do anything. Uh, Because the idea is we want you to see the value that the Junior League brings to to you. And we want you to be encouraged and inspired and motivated to want to attend these trainings. Because at the end of the day, um, you've paid your dues and now you've got this menu of offerings um, and it's all free for you, right? So the more you take advantage of, the more you put yourself out there, the more involved you get, the more you're going to benefit from it. And for women who might not have as much time, if you can only attend one event or one training, you know, a month or a year or a quarter, um, that's meaningful for that individual. So it's it's a great place to be because it really does cater to all different types of women wherever they may be in their life. Who conducts the trainings? Ah, another really good question. Um, So we bring in a lot of outside trainers. Oftentimes our own members are so skilled in various areas or they have special expertise. We'll even have some of our own members run the trainings. And so it's it's just a variety of trainers. I would think that members get to go through self-discovery as they are part of a committee and then they acquire different skills. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, that's one of the great things about being on a committee. And and I think that's why it is one of the main requirements is that every single member is placed on a committee is because it helps to keep you engaged. And not only does it keep you engaged, but, you know, whereas you perhaps wouldn't be the first person to want to uh, perhaps make an ask for fund development. Right. If you're now on a committee, it's a safe space for you to try something that might be a little bit out of your comfort zone. And I use, you know, the fund development as an example because so many people are not comfortable asking for money, right, for asking for uh, donor dollars. So if you are on a committee, such as a fund development committee, and maybe that's just not your strong suit, you know, you shy away from it, you don't want to do it, well, you're not going to mess anything up, right? It's a safe space for you to try, and 
maybe you'll find that it's something that you, hey, I, I kind of never thought I'd be good at this. And now that I've done it a couple times with the support of some, you know, girlfriends on the committee, it's not so bad. I've picked up a new skill. So it, it's very confidence boosting. Um, and on the, the flip side of that, maybe you try something through a committee and you're like, yep, I knew I wouldn't like it. And I tried it and I still believe the same. I didn't like it. But it, it's great because it gives you the opportunity to try new things um, in a very safe space. And you're going to be supported by other women. How long have you been with the Junior League? That is always a question that I stumble on <laughs> because I like to say that after a couple of years, it just kind of blurs and you feel like you've been around for a really long time. Um, I want to say I've been in the league for either seven or eight years. And then when you started, what was it like to where you are now? Wow. You know, there's one of the things I love about the Junior League is that while so much stays consistent, such as our core values, um, you know, what we believe in, our mission, kind of our found, our foundational aspect, it's an ever-evolving organization because really we like to evolve with the community and the needs of the community so that we're not stagnant. And, you know, one of the things that has changed since when I joined, uh, we used to have a lot more committees when I was a new member. And um, you didn't really get to pick the committee you were on. You got to rank a few committees that you were interested in. Um, but then you were placed on a committee and, you know, you got what you got. And if it wasn't one of your top choices, you know, oh, well, make the best of it. And then next year you get a new placement. Another change is that as new members, we were called provisional members. Um, so that's changed and we're now called new members. Um, as I said earlier, we're also in year two of a new strategic plan. That's a five year plan. And so with that come a bunch of different goals in terms of our community efforts, our fund development goals, um, you know, our membership impact. And so it, it's an ever evolving organization that is evolving to stay current with um, our member needs and our community needs. But our core foundation, um, you know, remains constant. So it's really nice. Thank you, Junior League of Orange County, immediate past president, Sabrina Begg, for being on Impact OC. And I thank everyone for tuning in. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber. Have an impactful day. You've been listening to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping our community. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio.